What's up everybody and welcome. In this episode, we're gonna replace the front wheel bearings on my FC. For those new to the channel, my name is Alex, AKA the Rotary Knight. You can find me on Instagram at rotary underscore knight. Now that's knight like knight in shining armor. If you have any questions on this episode, you can ask me in the comments down below, or you can find me on Instagram and send me a DM. So today I want to finish replacing the front wheel bearings on my car, but I figured I'd make an episode and educate you guys on a few of the options you have when replacing the front wheel bearings. Now this can be a bit of an issue with these cars because the way Mazda designed them, they're not designed to be replaced individually. Instead, you have to replace the entire hub of the FC, which at the time probably wasn't an issue when parts were readily available. However, now, like 30 years later after the car has been mass produced, finding replacement wheel hubs is actually quite difficult. You can still order new ones from Mazda themselves. However, those hubs can go for over $500 each. Each! Now, I make an okay amount of money as an engineer, but I'm rich, bitch! <laughs> but I ain't that rich. I'm broke, bitch! <laughs> so, what do we do? Well, we got a couple options outside of ordering the Mazda OEM hubs. And the first one's what I did about seven years ago when I originally changed the hub bearings is you can keep the same hub, but there's a write-up from Mazda Tricks that shows you on how you can drill slots into the hub so you can actually press the old bearings out and press new ones in. And to be honest, I have an extra set of hubs here that's what I was going to do in this episode. Then I ran into a problem. So it seems that the new races that I got did not fully sit all the way down inside the hub. They're about uh, two millimeters off from the bottom here. And the fact that they're not sitting flush may be a little bit uncomfortable. So I decided to investigate why that is. When I looked at the replacement races for the bearings that I bought, compared to the OEM races and bearings, you'll find that there is a radius on the bottom edge of the race here that is much smaller and thinner compared to the OEM units. Now I think that is the reason why this doesn't sit fully flush. I probably could take these to machine shops and get machined so that they'll accept the new race. But I decided to see what other options were out there and try something different. And these hubs are so old now, it will make me feel a little more comfortable running something new and fresh. These are the front wheel hubs from a company called GT1 Motorsports. Who are these people? Because I actually have no idea. <laughs> All I can tell you is they are from Japan. You know, I'm editing this video and I feel like I need to do these guys a little bit more justice. To give you a little bit more background on GT1 Motorsports, they're located in Tachikawa, Japan, which is just west of Tokyo. Their parent company is KSP Attain, and KSP Attain makes some pretty awesome parts for NSXs and some other popular platforms. Definitely worth checking out. So GT1 specializes in S13 parts with a focus on drifting. And lucky for us, they also include a few other popular drift platforms like the FC. And these guys specialize in drifting. They've definitely been doing it for a while now. And I've actually seen them a few times in some D1 competitions or street legal, or maybe it was drift muscle in Japan. One of those, I've definitely seen their cars a few times. They're definitely worth checking out. So check out their website. I'll have a link down below or find their Facebook page. So I hope I did these guys a little bit more justice and let's get back to the episode. Now I ordered these from righthanddrivejapan.com. That's rhdjapan.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. Now I've been to the website before. I've used them to order my Super Now in links. And so I've trusted the website and have no problem ordering from them. So the price for a full set of these is $400 for a pair. For the front, crazy reasonable compared to the OEM prices. You would be spending over $1,000 for OEM replacement parts. There is one other option for aftermarket hubs that I did find, and that was from Fujita Engineering, or Feed. 
Hedo, Evry, Agnes. I love those guys and I love the stuff that they do. I've been a fanboy since uh, I first saw them on Hot Version doing the Toge battles. However, the prices are pretty crazy and a little bit outside my budget for this car. If someone has a reference to their parts at a lower price, go ahead and add, add a comment down below so you can educate myself and everybody else here. Now, what are some of the differences between this unit and the OEM unit? So the first and obvious thing is the weight. I'm not 100% sure what the material is for these, but I'm pretty sure they're made out of steel and get instead of the aluminum. Well, for one, if I take my magnet, you can see these ones are magnetic versus the OEM hub, which is aluminum. Nothing. These are the instructions from GT1 Motorsports. I don't read Japanese. Nondesuka? So I have no idea what it says, except I was able to read the torque specs somewhere down here. Uh, but I'll get to those later when I do the installation. Now, the second thing that is different about these compared to OEM, and that is the wheel studs. These are basically the same thread pitch and size as stock. However, base here is different. And I wanted to install extended wheel studs. So I decided to go ahead and measure these and figure out what size they were. So after measuring them, I was able to find out that you can find extended studs from ARP from an Evo 8. There's the part number for you. I'll also put a link in the description down below. So thankfully we can use Evo 8 wheel studs and they're exact same in terms of the thread pitch. They match the base of these new studs and you can install them in the new hubs, no problem. And the third small difference, this one doesn't probably matter to most people. Uh, however, I wanted to run wheel spacers on my car. I know, I know internet, please do not hate on me. Why am I talking about the wheel spacers? So I got these from Powered by Max or Part Shop Max. I never know how to refer to these guys. The only thing is when I tried to slip this on to the hub, it wouldn't fit. And the problem was the center bore here. Now these are hub centric and it was off by 0.2 millimeters. The center bore of the spacers, they are at 59.5 millimeters, which is right at OEM. The GT1s were actually a little bit larger. It was like 59.7 millimeters. To account for that 0.2 millimeters difference, what I ended up doing was taking my Dremel and grinding away the anodized surface here. And that seemed to be enough to get them to fit onto the new hubs here. Voila. And you may be wondering, does that affect anything else? No, the rotors fit on these just fine. I'm not sure why that is. I think it just has to do with the anodized finish they have on here. It's even a little tight sometimes to get it on the wheel studs. Um, I think that's all it really is. So those are the differences of this GT1 hub versus OEM. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the garage since it's a nice day outside and start to replace these. I already did the left side of the car. I just need to do the right side of the car and I can call it a day and get this thing back on the road. If you want to know specific details on how to take this apart, I refer you to the factory service manual. You can find them online. Just Google Mazda RX-7 factory service manual and a link will come up and you can find exactly step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace everything.
The only thing that is going to be slightly different from what the factory service manual says for these new hubs is the torque at which you will tighten the axle nut with these new GT1 hubs because the weight is a little heavier. The frictional load is now going to be 0.6 to 1.1 kilogram. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for this episode. I forgot to record an outro, but I finished the setup in the rear. I didn't really bother taking pictures too much of that. There's just one picture here. You can see with the extended studs and spacers. Uh, all I did was replace the, the rear wheel bearings there. Nothing crazy there, pretty standard. Um, and then just installed the extended lug nuts or studs and the spacers. So yeah, that about wraps up this episode for the front wheel bearings. If you have any questions, as always, ask down below in the comments or find me on Instagram and send me a DM. Uh, until next time, my house is making lots of noises and that is my cue to go. Thanks again for watching. Please give a like if you found this episode useful. Uh, and if you're interested in the build, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Adios.